the artist she is. Yeah, man, and you're listening to... This is Park Stewart, and you're listening to nothing but the best in gospel music. What a great introduction right now. That's yes. Brother Park Stewart yes. right here, and he is our interview for the day. So, yes, sir. Robert L. Dean, let's talk about Mr. Park Stewart. Yes, Mr. Stewart is back with a banger, and it's in the time of Christmas. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Christmas. And what, let's talk about this music. What is happening, Brother Park? How are you doing? What's going on, friends? What's happening? Everybody all right? Yes, already, yeah, already, yeah, all right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Good to uh, be here, man. Thank y'all for inviting me, man. I appreciate it. Okay, so we just we just going to get right into it man. with you. And I'm just going to ask the question. What part of the country are you in? Detroit, Michigan, man. Okay, you in Detroit, 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 Michigan. But you know what I noticed? You know, uh, when when he came on, I saw that Adidas sweatsuit, and, and the first thing came in Run DMC, my Adidas, my and everything Adidas. like that. I'm like saying, you know, you got the old school stripes on, man. You bringing it back like that, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I like to do the uh, I like to do the things that everybody forget about to remind them of where we come from. You know. Uh huh. Yes. Now, now it's, another it's thing, before. another thing I'm checking out is marriage, romance, relationship, and honor. Talk about that background and, and what you're trying to convey to the people this morning. Actually, that's a, a, a wall in my home that my wife set up, and she puts these things on there, so it's like a wall uh, for family. We got another wall that says family, honor, things of that nature. So it's to remind us what this home is about and mm -hmm. like what we're all about, and that's uh, romance, intimacy, you know, the things that make a marriage good. So we have a marriage wall, then we got a family wall. So, uh, see, 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 brothers and sisters, uh, uh, his mate is letting everybody know he happy. Look at that smile on his face. And, and she made sure that he was in front of the wall to let y'all know, look, he's romantic. He's married. And he's going to honor his wife. Don't y'all call and DM him after this unless it's about business. I see you. Tell, tell, tell First Lady we say right on, right on. I, I, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, tell us what's going on in... I mean, because you're dropping song after song. You just, you're doing your creative thing. Yeah. Let's talk about what's going on in uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Stewart's life. Well, you know, I'm, I'm really just trying to uh, use the gift that God has given me. A lot of people view music as just music, and I kind of view music as a movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, music is the only thing that goes directly to the soul of man. And uh, I'm trying to... Be get us to feel the love of God inwardly. And in doing so, it says that men would stir up the gift that's in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to convey social awareness, uh, spiritual awakening of the conscience, you know, for us to return back to where our roots are and where our power is. And that's always been our strength that's in the Lord and our ability to overcome adversity and become diverse. And so that's what I'm really trying to do. And uh, so I, music is that vehicle I use. It's a gift from God. I'm just trying to share that gift to the world. That's it. So I'm I'm not I'm not trying to be funny, but mm -hmm. you in Detroit and yeah. and I I noticed that all the great songwriters seem to be uh soft spoken. You know, you 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 and Smokey you know, it's sitting up there. This, this is smooth. It's, just it's, laid it's, back. You know, just laid like, back. It said, let me let you know. Uh, I'm just trying to convey. I'm like saying, I'm, I'm going to be putting uh, uh, Park, Park and Smokey right next to each other. I bet you be like saying, who, who's who? <laughs> right. Because they so smooth with it. And, and you know, Smokey has written hit after hit after hit after hit. Yes, yes, yes. And so has Park. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's a writing sensation. And what I'm listening to as I as I look at you and hear you, is you remind me of the Curtis Mayfields. The Stevie. Oh, man, you know, it's it's an honor just for you all to uh, mention those great men, those great songwriters, and just put my name in there. You know, when I was younger, I wasn't brought up in church. I was, uh, I was on the streets of Detroit mm -hmm. uh, just trying to survive, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just, uh, my father played all kinds of genre of music in my household. I wasn't raised in church, so uh, it kind of gave me a foundation in the background of geniuses that wrote, you know, your Curtis Mayfield, your Smokey. Stevie Wonders. Uh, Stevie Wonder, the all-time great in my book. 
you know, and Donny Hathaway, Marvin Gaye, Gay, Sam Cooke, mm -hmm. Elder Barge. These mm -hmm. are uh, the people that uh, I listened to that I was attracted to. You know, old Motown, we had dramatics, we had Four Tops, mm -hmm. Temptations, you know, stylistics from Chicago, Shy Lights from Chicago, Blue Magic. I mean, I go so far back. Then we had jazz. You know, my father was a jazz buff, so wow. I listened to a lot of jazz and uh, even a lot of blues. You know, it was everything was in my household. And so my, by my father being a connoisseur, I was attracted to different genres of music. But those writers that you mentioned uh, help lay foundation. Uh, all writers, man, we follow what was before us. And we just try to keep those sounds and melodies from heaven echoing through every generation. That's really what we're trying to do. And uh, I really appreciate you all even mentioning me in the breath of uh, uh, those same guys. So let me ask you this question. You say that you was, you know, you was in the streets. Mm -hmm. and, and tell me how the streets impacted your, your life today. Because I always tell people, when you from the streets and God takes control of your life, you still have a work to do in the streets. So um, my thing is, let's talk about your, your background and, and how you are impacting the streets today. Man, you know what? That was very powerful what you just said. And I, I like your understanding. I think that the problem comes, uh, how did it impact me, man? It was major was major everything that i am is based upon the experience that i had you know god says experience patience experience experience hope you know once you get that experience then you're able to tell about the hope that lies within you you know when you the difference is you just say you have someone that was uh more fortunate and came up in a good home mm -hmm. middle class family He's going to write from a different perspective than somebody that lived for survival. Yes. Every, mm -hmm. you, you're coming from two different, two different uh, perspectives, man. It's completely different. And I think one of the major things that people have a problem with, we, we, we put titles on music, gospel, secular, this, that. I'm a songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, I do music. Right. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is when you try to, pinpoint me and put me in a genre, how do I reach the secular arena? Everybody always say, well, your songs are intimate. They're this. Well, they're everything that I've experienced that God has brought me through yes. and where he's trying to relate to others. Mm -hmm. I have most of the people, uh, I have so many secular artists, man, that uh, love what we do. And I think it's because it's authentic. I didn't try to be R&B or I didn't try to do this. I just go with the sound that God put in my spirit and it happened to be what people called a R and B sound. And believe it or not, I had a problem with that when we first started in gospel music, it was a problem. They were saying it was too secular. It was mm -hmm. to this. Then I had the secular arena. They was embracing it, but they were afraid of it because they said it was, uh, the words that they used was, uh, the conviction was too strong. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of the, man that I should not call his name, but he was a big time record uh, ex uh, executive. And he said, man, I want to do something with these songs you got. He said, but they make me want to cry. And uh, that's showing you the impact of the purity of a song when it's delivered uh, will touch the secular arena. And this is why we have artists as Justin Bieber, uh, Usher, 112, Casey and JoJo, Boys to Men, uh, all these different people, uh, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson, who listened to the song Ordinary Just Won't Do, and the commission sound, and mm -hmm. the sound that, that touches them, and we wonder what it is that touch them. Is they fill in the, the heart of God. I was talking to Mitchell Jones, who co-wrote some songs with me in commission, mm -hmm. and he made a comment to me the other day, and he said, Parks, I think maybe been a little ahead of our time, and then he made a comment. He said, when people hear these songs, man, they hear home. And I thought about it. They hear home. Home is where the heart is. Home is with your creator. Mm -hmm. He puts something there to cause you to long back, mm -hmm. to come back to him. 
And I think when they hear the music, uh, even if you don't know what it is you're hearing, you're feeling that pureness. Blessed are the pure at heart. They mm -hmm. shall see God. Mm -hmm. And so my presentation is for people, for God to be represented. Yes. Represented, represented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we presented something of him that was uh, not completely authentic. Talented, gifted, but not authentic in our presentation. The word of God is always authentic, but our presentation of it, uh, because we have identity crisis, we couldn't present it with the pureness of the personality that God blessed us with. I stay in my lane. I do what I do the way he gives it to me, and uh, I'm comfortable with that. I, I want to be comfortable with what he's given me. I don't pursue other things. Uh, I'm not into self and mm -hmm. or being a celebrity. Uh, none of that means nothing to me. Being a blessing to people, getting imperfect people to see that we seek to receive the perfect love of God. It, it, that's my agenda, you know? And so, uh, yeah, it impacted everything, man. But uh, all my forefathers, like even in gospel music, but I was in the secular arena before I was in the gospel arena. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shaped who I was. And then I got into gospel, you know, the great Thomas Whitfield, Grants mm. Allen, all your pioneers, Andre Crouch, mm. Hawkins, you know, Daryl Coley, James Moore, Donnie McClurkin, the Winans, Commission, Clarks. You know, Detroit is just full. And even the people that people don't mention often, you know, your Dietrich Hattons and uh, your Derek Brinkley's and Adoration and Praise. And, huh different ones you know i even worked with uh aaron Lindsay from ohio uh you know just the different guys they were younger so mm -hmm. i used to love to bring the young guys in to give them opportunities so that we could uh, work together and they could cultivate their gift because i saw something in them that was special and i think that's that pay it for it and uh leaving the legacy of love of god because there's no real legacy without love i'm on I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to pitch it over to Robert. But uh, th th this is, you know, I almost want to start calling you uh, Uncle Parks. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me ask you this question, Brother Parks, is um, I want to just, I, I see a vision of a family reunion. What is it like when you go, when, when, when Uncle Parks comes into the family reunion, uh, how are you received? Because, you know, at my family reunion, you would just be an OG. And everybody be like, Uncle Parch is here. And everybody be like, get him a plate. We got to ask questions. Right. So how, how, how is your family reunion when you come in? It's it's the same. You know, that's why everybody view me here as OG. They always say, man, let's go uh, kick it with him to see. You know, they always say I have wisdom. Yes. These type of things, you know. So uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy imparting. I enjoy it. I'm an intimate person, man. I like what we're doing now. It's mm -hmm. intimate. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no frills, no mm -hmm. bunch of stuff to, you know, hype. It's just real talk. Mm -hmm. And I think people like the sincerity of the real talk. And if you want to call that OG, you know, I hear it all the time. You're so smooth. you laid back. you mm -hmm. you this. You know, I'm, I'm just what God gave me. If what you see is what I am. I don't have any fronts. And uh, that's how I'm received at the family reunion, just like you said. And it's funny you use that term, family reunion. I did a interview the other day, and I told the guy, I said, man, I'm like the OJs. <laughs> I said, I'm just trying to get people to ride the love train. Right, right. <laughs> we'll ride the love train. If, if you want to get on this train, that's right. You know, I'm just trying to get uh, the people to ride the train of love. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you, and I met you at the Young Artists for Christ convention in like 1989 90. Wow. yeah yeah you're taking me back because that was one of the last ones and the next year yeah. it was it was supposed to go to yeah. houston and it didn't that was the end of it but i remember meeting you you've always been laid back even amongst yolanda being there and fred you you, you stood out to me and i was in i was in college so i was i was younger but but i remember you and, and one thing i can say about your name is whenever it's mentioned people talk about how you're so powerful in your lyrics and and let's talk about more than a melody that's one of the greatest lyrical songs written for yolanda and anybody how did that song come about the the context of it you know uh originally i was working on something for a friend of mine alex morris who's the lead singer of the four tops now mm -hmm. and uh he had a 
young lady that was singing and they wanted me to write a song for them. And actually the original version of More Than a Melody uh, was me and Aaron Lindsay. Wow. Aaron Lindsay played that. And uh, Ben Tanker produced it, but mm. the original version was Aaron Lindsay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, the original version with Aaron Lindsay was incredible. The guy is a phenomenal keyboard is for now producing so it's been and uh that's how that came about and i was just in the studio and uh everybody that knows when i write i don't sit down and write i usually sit down and with a musician and i don't even have lyrics uh we, it, it would be just a melody or it'd be a thought and then we'll structure a song and uh, give me eight measures of this or this or that and when i went in and put the headphones on it just came to me it's more than just a melody, more than just a song. Yes. You know, and uh, that's when the gift kicks in. It's like the Lord just begins to deal with me, man. And whatever's in me, it comes out. I like to write from inspiration and not just sit down and pen something. And uh, I was sitting down just thinking how important things is and what music really was to me. And uh, that's what came. It came to me. There's more than a melody, man. Music is deeper than that. And I've always wanted people to look beyond the surface and gravitate to the things that are deep and the vibe that's beneath those things that we see on the surface. So, you, 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 you're just, your styling is just so phenomenal because you're so lyrical. Ordinary just won't do, and the list goes on and on. I believe God chose you to write the way you write for a time as now. A lot of people are before their time, but uh -huh. now you're in time because God was time. He said, let there be, and there was. Preach on, so preach on. all the stuff that happened before then was bringing you for now. People have to listen because they're quarantined. People have to listen because they're looking for answers with all the things that are going on in this world. Your timing is right now for the young, the old, and the middle age. I'm telling you, you are in your season of where God wants you to be. People probably told you, man, you should be further than this. You should be doing this. God is all-knowing. He can make an unknown known in one day. Because that's Absolutely. the power that God is. But, dude, your writing has followed you from then till now because this Christmas album is crazy, especially this coming home missing you. Wow. Wow. Thank you, bro. I, that, to, to be honest with you, uh, Ed Armstead, uh, the one that's the executive producer and helped me to produce some songs and mm -hmm. write some songs mm -hmm. on the CD, it was really... Uh, his idea to do the Christmas album. He'd been trying to get me to do that for six, seven years, man, if not longer. And I was like, man, you know, we kept putting it off. Then finally he came to me and said, you're doing the Christmas album. Right. I'm going to take care of everything about it. You just you just show up at the studio and do it. And it was amazing how it came together. We sat down, we started off, and we thought we was doing a Christmas song, and we came up with Put the K in Cool. Mm -hmm. It was a social awareness song. Yes. Actually, we was working on the Christmas CD then, and it turned to that. All of a sudden, we started doing the thing, and with the song you're talking about, Missing You, it's actually the reprise of Coming Home. And, of course, uh, it was Ed that said, man, I want to write a song about, uh, you know, somebody had been out of town, and they're coming home, and uh, it's this. Well, of course, I could relate to that, mm -hmm. you know, being on the road and, doing those things so all I did was picture my wife and how I feel when I'm away and I'm out of town and uh, I'm a family man and uh, it didn't take much for me you know to be inspired all I had to do was think about how I feel when I miss my wife mm -hmm. actually that that's how I came out of just singing from wow. singing from the soul man. wow okay so uh, I'm getting ready to get into your business now you ready for it yes sir okay so you you have been married how long? Uh, ten years. Okay, so ten years. Time, I've been married before. I was divorced <laughs> and, and married again. Okay, Absolutely. but in this ten years, what is the song that you have written that is the song that every time you sing it to your wife, uh, no matter how upset or, or, or whatever is going on, it always puts her right back to, oh, baby. Well, her, her song right now is coming home missing you. That's okay. That, 
that that and jingle bells, but uh, <laughs> three times from listening to you, that that's taking over. Whatever it was, that's it right now. That coming but, home, y'all. So so, she, so she love that man. I some about it. She loves that. She loves jingle bells because she said the version is so different mm -hmm. and uh it just makes uh makes them feel a certain way. She said makes people want to dance, makes them feel joy, but she just loves, she said, coming home. She said, I love the song. She said, but when you get to that reprise, she said, it does something to me. So and, uh, this is what I'm going to ask, because uh -huh. we, we have a lot of uh, musicians, a lot of artists mm -hmm. that are in, that are married. Uh, there's going to come a time where we're going to do a show where we're going to want the couples to come on. And this mm -hmm. Ashta wife, and she'll be willing to be a part of that show with you, uh, because oh, I think she'll, it's. She'll love it, man. Yeah. She'll, she'll love it. She'll love it. Yeah. I think it's so important that, you know, um, as you all are going forth, that people begin to understand the story, the sacrifice uh, that families go through for the world to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And and they're sharing, you know, uh, uh, you say get on the love train. And she's like, look, I'm on the love train, and I need to have some time to love on my train, <laughs> you know, love my man on this train too. So um, um, just just let her know that we would love her to be part of that show. We're going to be working on some new ideas for the new year. And I think it's so important that we bring the spouses on and have them share you know, about how they make it through. You you are hit on a point. You know, we're doing the commission movie. I was just going to say something. And, uh, the commission movie, this is what I admire uh, about certain individuals. You know, you have individuals who've been divorced like me, Fred Hammond. Right. Michael Brooks. Yep. And then you have those men who had solid marriages like uh, Ed Armstead, mm -hmm. him and his wife, mm -hmm. Mitchell Jones and Carlene, mm -hmm. Keith and Kiki, mm -hmm. Carl and Toy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, where others had broken marriages, man, you had those that had solid. Mm -hmm. It stood the test of time where they love one another. So I think what you're doing, that would be very powerful because we, our whole objective is to push and restore the brokenness of family yes. and relationships in general, whether it's father to son, right. mother and daughter, just in general. So I think that's a great idea, man. And uh, I just wanted to let you know, man, we've been talking about that. So Amen. Uh, confirmation. I look up to those people because, man, they, they have great marriages. I tell Mitch and Arlene, I tell Carl and Keith, I tell them all the time, man, I really appreciate how you all had marriages, man, and how y'all stayed together. And Keith and Kiki have been together since high school. Wow. wow. You know, they were high school uh, sweethearts and to this day, tight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so uh, it would be great, man, to hear all the different perspectives and then to see how God can bless and bring you through. And you can have not what people call me, what marriage has become, but what God said it could be. Right. You know? So let me ask you this question. Um, let's talk about Ed. Uh, I ain't going to yes, call sir. Ed a bully. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to call Ed uh, anything other than an aggressive, visionary uh, uh, person. I always tell, sometimes when people are aggressive, people think that they might be bullying and not realizing that when you're passionate about Come something, on. you go all in. Yeah. And Ed um, is very passionate about you. Let's talk yeah. about how you all got together and how there's this balance. Because I, I kid you not, I want to say this. You know, when the, when the, when your project started first coming to us, Ed was in my head, and I was getting, I was combining your names. I was, I was calling Park Armstead. You know, I, I was put combining the names because Ed was so active and involved, and I loved it. Now he's like the brother. You know, hey Ed, what's going on? When he gets on, tell us how y'all got together and how that partnership works. Wow, man, I wish he was on because he tells that story so well. Actually, we met at Young Artists for Christ also. Wow. Whoop, whoop. Yep. And uh, shout out to Michael Brooks. Man, yes. For that vision he had, man, with the, man, Young Artists for Christ was a oh. amazing thing. Mm -hmm. Bringing artists together, doing things, man, we can't even describe. It was fantastic. I know. So shout out to my man who's a great songwriter in itself. Matter of fact, let me just stop right here and just give a shout out to Commission, man, for these guys, man, being innovative and for us, God bringing us together yes. to, to touch the world. Yes. They're my peeps, man. Phenomenal. And, uh, 
yeah, I want to say that Ed, man, we go back over 30 years. We met at the Young Artists for Christ. Mm. And I got sick at Young Artists for Christ. I had a heart condition. Mm -hmm. Mm. A lot of people didn't know it. And I I passed out. And uh, Ed caught me. Mm. Uh, But previous to that, I saw him and we had had a conversation. And I gave him my number. And uh, he said he was blown away that I gave him my number, but I just sent something in him, and I knew he had a group. I liked his group. He had a group called Redemption with his brother and some other guys, and they could were really good. And uh, from that point on, man, most of the relationships that I have, the people are tight. They happen organically. We don't work on them. It just happened. And uh, we talked to each other, and from that point on, man, we've been through, man, what you got? You ain't got no food? I'll be over there. Right. Mm. Hey, hey, man, what you doing? Come over here and eat, man. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, you need $20? Yeah, I need it, but I can't get there. Don't worry about it. I'm bringing it to you. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about that kind of his wife, his family. Mm-hmm. We we are tight, man. You know, we just, this, and the passion that you feel for him is because of the love that he has for me. Mm-hmm. He tell me all the time, man, you humble, you this, you ain't going to mm-hmm. push yourself, mm-hmm. you ain't going to do this, but I will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he know? do. And he do. That's his, his thing is he's a he's a promoter, but whatever he promotes, he's got to believe in. Mm-hmm. That's why he's a pastor. That's why he's a preacher. Mm-hmm. He moves in the prophetic realm, but that's an aggressive spirit that says whatever God has for the people that he loves, I want them to get it. And it's all about busting the devil in the head for him. He's not going to mm-hmm. take no from the enemy. Come on. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. He's going to sue. But his passion that you have is genuine, man. It's who he is. and But it stems from the love that he has for me. I think he wants things for me. Man, the way he talk about it, it, it's just unbelievable. He blows people away. And everybody knows that when you hear Ed talk, yes. uh, he's in my corner, man. And I love him for that. I can't even put into words uh, the passion that he has and the relationship we had. I, it would just be doing an injustice to try to put in words. But yeah, that's it by nature. But it's in a spiritual aggression mm-hmm. along with love and passion. So when he speaks, it's going to come out. And if you're talking about fighting for somebody that he loves, he's going to do it. He's going to be very aggressive with it. See, people, don't, it, mm-hmm. people don't understand because you described Ed like I am. Wow. Pe- people don't understand when there's something in you and you believe in people so much that you just go aggressively, he'll tell you I'm the same way because I, I start off as a promoter. You know, having worked with Neely Dickerson, Al Wash, and all those that, people. That, that ain't true. You but, started off as a singer at four years singer, old. But I mean, and I then mean, you grew with I mean, into I, I mean, as I got older, I'm known for being a promoter in the industry. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I've always been one of those that put myself to the side for years to make mm-hmm. sure that other people's oh, dreams oh, okay, stop were you. come forth. I'm going to stop you. Mm-hmm. I want you to know uh, he's affectionate now. Most of the time, like I'm Leonard James Thompson III. He's one of the few people that everybody normally uses his whole name, Robert Earl Dean. And, and <laughs> if you know him as the promoter, he, he's known as Red. Right. Red Ink. Always the, passing out stuff, like stuff on cars, uh-huh. everything and so like Ed. He, his whole thing was he was in the industry. He was a singer and everything else. But he was so passionate about supporting everybody else. See, mm-hmm. that's why I have to stop him and I have to do, I'm his, I'm his uh, promoter now. <laughs> because I said, you don't have to promote anymore. I'm going to do right. your promotion right. because he's now going into the full artistry realm. Right. But the one thing about when you find people that love people, they go hard. And that's what we see with Ed. Yes. He goes hard for you. Yes. And Robert Earl Dean has gone hard for people for years. Yes. And everybody says, how in the world does Robert know everybody? Robert Earl Dean, and like I tell people, he literally studies the industry. And I so study you. you. He studies I've been a people. fan of yeah. yours for years. And I was at that same Young Artist for Christ when you passed out. Wow. Yeah. And wow, so that's... this is the thing. When they see uh, uh, people like you all, mm-hmm. um, it is not that we just happen to come into this. This has been oh, no. a part of our life forever. And uh, we were just talking about today, you know, I said, Robert, I'm going to pray that the Lord bless you with a certain type of wife. He said, I don't know if I want to be married because, 
you know, this is where I'm at at this point, and I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I said, you know what? Sometimes people, God does not have that in the, in, in the plan for them to be married because he has so much work for them to do. Like I said, like Paul said, I wish that you'd be as I am, right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know what? yeah. I, I'm going to say this, man. I said those exact words. Uh-oh. I said, you know what, man? I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm not, I'm not trying to get in no relationships. I'm just gone. And I took three years. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought after I got my divorce, I was like, man, I'm not, I'm not going to do the marriage thing. I'm just going to chill. And I took three years and I didn't date anybody. When I said I didn't go in, I couldn't believe it myself. Mm -hmm. I, I was married since I was 19. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what single life was like. So I thought maybe that I might want to date, but I didn't, man. I took that time and the time that I said I wasn't looking for nobody and I wasn't going to do it, then God sent my wife. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we never know. It could be either or. But when you become the contender, the state you are, whatever he has for you, I tell people all the time, blessings come to a place. Mm -hmm. You see how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. There have I commanded the blessing. God has commanded blessings for us mm -hmm. when unity is prevalent. And if anybody's not going to come together in unity, then they're not in the place of the commanded blessing. Mm -hmm. And so I think once we get to a designated place in our life, mm -hmm. then whatever is supposed to be there is already designated for us there, and we'll walk right into it. And I want to say this to, to Red. I'm going to call him Red. Yes, sir. I appreciate what you've done for other people. And, uh, you know, the Bible says God will not forget your labor of love that you minister and still do minister. I tell people all the time, people love to praise people, to, you know, but nobody praises the bridge. Right. Get you from one destination to another. Yes, nobody says, oh, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate right. you. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and a lot of times, man, we play the bridge, you know, but we get people from destination to other destination. So God says, I won't forget your labor of love, which means you are unforgettable, bro. Wow. God says you are unforgettable. And, you know, that's what I love about uh, just being in contact with my peers. Like a lot of times me, Carl Reed and, Mitchell Jones, we go on the road, we have conversations. And me and Fred to have life conversations. I live for the life conversations. Right. Everyone that I've been around from Marvin Sapp, you know, uh, I call him Marvinous. You know, we have a relationship, different type. You know, people have different personalities. A lot of people that people don't know, like Marcus Cole. Yes. Uh, real, real strong in the word. I mean, just a, a, a bright, articulate young man. You know what I'm saying? And yes. Just, I love people, man. Mm -hmm. Keith, I call him the voice. Yes. I want to give a shout out to my man because everybody always asks me how I get started in this business. And a lot of people don't know that me and Eric Bryce, the guitar player uh, who penned the song with me, You Can Depend, and Don't Worry. He's the reason why I'm in this business. Wow. Uh, I did my first recording before there was a, a commission with Eric Bryce, and it was so progressive that the record companies loved it and said, but we can't do it. It's too aggressive. Wow. It's, it's, it's too much. They're not ready for that. This is actual truth. And so Eric, uh, we were childhood friends, man. And he played guitar and he came back. He was playing for the Clarks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was just getting into gospel music because I was just fresh off the street. And he kind of, you know, got together with my writing. And man, we, we started writing. And so a lot of this uh, is tribute to uh, goes to Eric Bryce, man. And he did a lot of stuff with Fred on I Am Persuaded and yeah. uh, things of that nature. So Eric Bryce is another person, man. Earl Wright. Earl Bryce Wright. Wright. He was there at the Eddie, workshop. Eddie Horn. Yep. All these, that's why I mentioned these people because you mentioned Young Artists for Christ. Man, I got chill bones. He, he was there. Yeah. You know, Yolanda and her upstart. Yes. And you all these people, man, that were young and up and coming. David Frazier. Yeah. Okay. David Frazier, yeah. man. Come on, man. So, David so, Frazier from New York. Great songwriter. Percy <laughs> Beatty. Great songwriter. Yes. Writer, so, so I'm going to stop y'all now because y'all y'all, y'all reminiscing. It's getting ready to get good. But uh, uh, I want to say, uh, 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 I'm going to call you. Hey, can I call you Uncle, Uncle Parks yeah. right now? Man, okay. Just talking so, to him is so amazing. Let me say this, um, uh, Robert. I I, I want to break the rules. Okay. Um, I want to break the rules because y'all talk so much about this song coming home, but mm -hmm. the song we're supposed to be promoting 
is Merry Little Christmas. <laughs> so I want to know, Uncle Parks, <laughs> if we could do a back to back on both. this one and do uh, Coming Home and, and then. then follow Merry Little Christmas. And I'm going to break the rules. If I get in trouble, it's okay. Uh, well, you, you know the program director. Uh, uh, yeah, got it. we got a, We got a kind of close relationship. Right, you got a close but relationship. Can we do a back to back because and, and you introduce it? And, I'm telling you, because y'all the messed up. But uh, you, if I don't play it, they're gonna be mad. Right, because you, you, you. I'm telling you, man. For years, I was asking where is Park Stewart. Your name used to always just stay in my head. And then mm -hmm. um, Armstead, I don't know how we c connected, but he talked about you and I almost had a fit. He thought I was crazy. I said, Oh my God. I've been asking about this man. It was God's timing. I'm on radio. I've only been on here since March. So it was God's timing that this day was going to come. That's not yeah. true. On the radio regularly? Regularly, yeah. Regularly in you was here March every Friday. since Corona. <laughs> so I always have to get him to right. remember. But, but I wasn't always here. I, yeah. I was sent to do the show. He, he, he was part of the foundation of GOD Radio, but he had a, a once-a-week report that right. he would pre-record. About the industry. But when... But when the corona. corona hit, you know, the Lord put it on his heart to come in and hang out with me on the morning yes. show. And it was exactly what I prayed for. So we changed the morning show from Dr. LT and the crew to Dr. LT oh. and the Robert Earl Dean uh, and, and Robert Earl Dean. And we became partners right. in, in this. Wow. And so the Love outcome it. of Corona is this is a part of the Corona outcome that allowed us to get together. Yep. Although we grew up in, in the, the same, same church of God in Christ yeah. circle. And, and we're always wow. around. And uh, But this is the first time in all the work that we've been doing in San Diego for years, mm -hmm. the first time that we actually been consistent in weeks and weeks of this. And yes. the outcome has been Look at God. is that the format that we've been able to establish for <sighs> artists and writers and has been amazing. You know what yeah, I'm that's, saying? Uh, that's awesome. I, I, that just made me think I'm going to say this real quick. Relationships stem. You know, you had commission, you had clocks, you had the wine. Yes. You had witness. You know, Michael Brooks and witness. Yes. You had Vanessa Bell. Mm -hmm. All of us, man. It's it's one big old, you know, big talented cesspool, man. Yes. Things here. Yes. And it's really close in close proximity. You know, Lisa Page, Tasha Page. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, from here being transparent. Yeah. And uh, me and Mitch, the songs we wrote came out the way they did, I believe, because of the pureness in which we tried to write them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we love being around each other. Yes. He played ball and I played ball. Mm -hmm. uh, before I met him, they told me about him and I heard he heard about me. Mm -hmm. And when we got together, boom, you know, chemistry. So I understand what you guys are saying. The same thing with me and it. Chemistry. Yes. You know, you just meet certain people. There's a guy here that I write with. He's kind of unsung, but he he's written. He's done things. Mo Woods said, you know. I've heard of him. You know, you got Cordell. I call him all these different people. Uh, the guy that's doing the movie, Javon Dawkins, young mm -hmm. man, Eric Dawkins, Anson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how all these things are connected. Yes. You start calling names, man. You got to keep going because all these names are connected. It's connected. Aaron Lindsay's Ohio. Yep. Dawkins is Ohio. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know. You just keep going, man. You keep going because all these people are linked together. Yes, sir. So when we link together and put our perspective to do things, something with oneness, mm -hmm. we're going to come up with something special. Yes, sir. So I think the pandemic is bringing other people closer. Yes, sir. I think about all the times we in the studio and Fred would say something. Uh, let's try this. And Mitch would say, hey, let's do this. You know, everybody just doing certain things. It was that camaraderie, man. Yes. You know, and so we're not going to the studio and it's me and Ed. It's camaraderie. Yes. You know, it's it's that relationship, man, from the keyboard player to everybody else, man. Mm -hmm. It's what makes it special. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes y'all broadcast special because it's that chemistry, man. We got to bring that love back in that chemistry, man. I appreciate y'all, man, for promoting how it happened and for showing that relational thing here, especially in this time of COVID, man. It's appreciated. Amen. Thank you, sir. Will you introduce the the double play? Coming home. The Woo! new thing. Introduce both songs, that's, that's and then we're going to start off with coming home. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing coming home, or you're doing the coming home reprise? Uh-oh, hold on. Let me, let me check it. Let's do it. coming home. Okay. Coming home. Okay. okay. The, coming home. Uh, uh, yeah. Written by 
me, Ed Armstead, and Mo Woods said, and it's a song that he wanted to do to uh, talk about family, man. Mm-hmm. Family coming together for the holidays after the father has been out of town and he missed his family. And so come home and say, hey, I've been gone and uh, it's my family that kept me strong and now I'm coming back. I'm coming home. Can't wait to see y'all. Wait till y'all hear this. Gotta hug my babies. Yeah. Kiss my baby. And then right after coming home, we're going to play one of the songs that we're promoting heavily here. And this is Merry Little Christmas. This is none other than Uncle Park Stewart. Yes. We love you, the man. one and only writer. <laughs> <Phenom. laughs> and, and thank you so much for spending your time with us this morning. Here we go. Coming bless home. Bless you, sir. Thank you.